Hey guys, it's Drake with the RPG Construct. I'm going to do the last of these how to play mouse guard videos. I believe this is number six or seven. I don't know, six or seven. And today we're going to be tackling conflict. The one topic in this game that I really didn't understand, and it took me uh, probably about a week of watching a few um, actual plays and to kind of wrap my head around the system. But now that I understand it, it's actually really cool. So I'm just going to go into it. We're going to go step by step. I got the got the mouse guard book here. Um, and we're just going to go step by step to kind of how you set up conflict and how it all kind of renders out. So the first thing is you have to figure out what type of conflict this is. Okay, and the, the GM will, will do that. And there's basically eight main ones. And then they have kind of a catch-all called other. But is this an argument, a chase, a fight, a fight with an animal, a negotiation, a journey, a speech, or a war. So these conflicts range from an argument with one person to a whole war. So it's done the same way, no matter what the conflict is. It's handled the same way, okay? So the first thing you do, as I said, is you figure out the type of conflict. Then you have to figure out who's involved. It's perfectly okay for your mouse not to be involved in this conflict, okay? Uh, so figure out who it's going to be and elect a conflict captain. This is the person that really initiated the conflict. They're the one who should really be kind of at the forefront. They started the conflict. They should be the conflict captain. And they, they have an important role here. Once the conflict captain is elected, you have to um, state what your goals are. And you want these to be broad and open to interpretation, right? So let's just say in this conflict, you're fighting a crow, you know, like a raven or something, right? And you, your mission is to protect the shipment of honey from this apiary um, to this other territory. And this crow is trying to get past you and destroy that, that honey. So maybe your goal is to um, get the bird away without any damage to the honey. That's your broad goal, right? Um, maybe you might shoo them away and lose the honey. Maybe, um, you know, you'll do everything. You just don't know, right? And then the GM has to state their goal. Their goal is to get the, the honey, right? And to not get hurt, I guess. But you want to make these generalized so that you can maybe get part of your goal, maybe not all. Um, and you'll, you'll see why here in a minute, because there's not just win or lose. There's many levels of winning and losing in, in, in conflict. So... Um, then the important thing is you have to figure out your disposition. Disposition to me is like the group hit points, but it's not actual hit points. Unless you specifically state that you want to kill something, no, nothing dies. It's not about killing. It's about teamwork and about, you know, missions and quests and stuff like that. It's not about killing things. So it's actually very kid friendly. Um, if you want to take it that route. So think about it as group hit points. And the way that you figure that out is um, there's a table on page, I believe it's 105. Yeah, on 105. You, we are going to be fighting an animal, as I said, a crow. So what, what we do, we test our fighter or our hunter skill. Let's say, for example, we have a, the conflict captain has a fighter rank of four. Okay, so he, he has four up to two other people can help him with his fighter, which would put him to six, right? Just like we learned in the other videos. Some assistance gives you one extra die. So that would be two extra dies, because one from each person, so that would be six. And maybe he has a wet, or maybe he has a wise or something like that. All of these things can be used to increase that, that number. So let's say he's rolling 66, okay? And as we learned in the other videos, a one, two, or three is a failure, a three, four, five, is a success. So let's assume that he rolls a three. He rolls three successes out of those six. He takes that tested fighter skill and he adds it to his health or his nature, whichever's higher. So let's say, for example, he had a health of five. He would take that health of five, add the three, and that patrol's disposition for this conflict would be eight. Okay. Now the crow would just be base nature. So five, six, seven, something like that. Um, it, the GM would have that already. 
So let's just say that both parties have the number seven for their disposition, okay? It's the group hit points, okay? Now, when you're doing that, you also have to take into account any conditions that the mice may have. Are they angry? Are they thirsty? Are they tired? Anything that can impact them negatively can, can take away die, uh, dice when, when you roll, okay? So just keep that in, in mind. And again, each on page 105 here, there's a chart that explains what you test in every conflict. So you can test persuader, scout, fighter, pathfinder, order, militarist, haggler. There's a bunch of different things, okay? And the GM's gonna, gonna know this, so don't, don't worry about it. Then, then the fun part to me, it's kind of the really interesting thing um, that I have kind of dig in this game. So, sorry, I gotta get back here. Um, this is the best way that I can equate it, thing I can equate to guys. Mouse guard is kind of like rock, paper, scissors. Um, you don't know what I'm going to throw out. I don't know what you're going to throw out. And depending on what each of us throw out, it can be good or bad for you. So what you do, both the GM and the patrol or the conflict captain, whichever, but you'll probably be conversing about it, sets up three actions. Okay. Three actions and they write them down. Now you can only do four things. You can attack, you can defend, you can maneuver, and you can faint, right? So these are obvious things. Attacking means, especially with if we're fighting a snake, you are going to be trying to hurt that snake. Defending, you're going to be more defensive. Maybe you're all going to huddle up, and you know you are going to try to um, you know defend from hopefully their attack. You can maneuver, try to get a more advantageous position, or hinder them. Like a, a maneuver would be like a disarm or you try to get to the high ground to give you advantage on the next attack, right? Um, so keep that in, in mind. And next you have faint. Faint is like a sneak attack, right? If you faint um, and the other person, I'm, I'm going to go through the um, different combos, but if you faint and the other person defends, pretty much you kind of faint like you're going to attack and then you attack some, somewhere else. You basically get a free hit. They don't do anything to you. They just stand there while you pretty much wallop them. So it's like a sneaky attack. Okay. So when you're doing that, and I'm going to go through these, hold on. There is a, um, ooh, excuse me. There on page 111, there is a, um, I don't know how to say it, just kind of a table that explains right here. That explains if you do this and the GM does this, this is how, how you guys roll that off. So I'm just giving an example, again, um, with regards to the patrol fighting a snake, all right? If I attack and the snake, uh, if you attack and the snake attacks, right? You both roll your attack independently, meaning you roll your fighter, I roll my, my fighter. However many successes you have and I have, that goes off each of our disposition. It's like hit points be being removed, okay? So if you hit me for four and I hit you for three, that's basically four and three of those hit points going down. So we only have a few left, right? If I attack and you defend, we do a versus roll. Whoever has more successes wins that. So if the attacker has more su successes when I'm defending, okay, the attacker takes more basically points off of my disposition. If I have more as I'm defending, he doesn't do anything to me, okay? Um, if I attack and he faints, basically, um, you can't do anything. If I faint and he attacks, it's really nothing is going to happen there. Um, if I maneuver and they attack, I am, uh, again, we do that, that versus roll to see if... Um, you know, whoever wins, whoever has the higher amount of successes gets to do their, their action. Um, and again, on page 111, there's a bunch of these things and it has basically a versus role and uh, an independent role, or it just kind of cancels e each other out. So like if you defend and, and I faint as a defender, you can't do anything. It, you're pretty much out of luck. If I faint and, and you attack, I'm out of luck. 
right? Because the attacker is going to be walloping me. I'm trying to do something sneaky and he's just coming in and just bashing me. So look on page 111 and it'll tell you what to do. So when you are doing these, these attacks, right? Remember, we're, we're fighting with an animal. So if you're going to attack, you're going to roll using your fighter or your hunter skill. If you're defending, you're going to roll using your lore or your nature skill. Faint is fighter or hunter, and maneuver is lore or nature. Now, things like argumenting, um, argumenting, did I just say that? Having an argument, you know, your attack is going to be pers persuader or manipulation. Um, if you're doing a chase, it's a lot of pathfinding and scout. So they specifically have on page 113 what you roll for each of these things. Now, each um, of the people involved in, in the conflict, these three people get to basically act, okay, in, in this one round. So like I said, the GM has come up with their three actions. The party has come up with their three actions. Nobody knows what they are, okay? So the GM flips over his, his card, his first card, or tells you the crow is going to attack. Then you tell them, I mean, if it's online, you're just going to have to take the benefit of the doubt what they were they were going to do. If it's attack and attack, you do your, your independent roles, blah, blah, blah. And you do that three times or until somebody's disposition is down to zero. Okay. If at the end of the conflict, somebody is not down to zero, you can go again. Okay. You absolutely can go, go again if you choose, or you can surrender or you can, you know, offer them a truce or whatever. There's a lot of different things to do, but you pick up, you pick your three actions, the GM picks their three actions, and you guys flip. It's like, it, as I said, it's like rock, paper, scissors. If you throw out scissors and I throw out paper, I'm screwed, right? If, you, if I put out a rock and you put out scissors, you're screwed. And it's, it's all change. It's all strategy. What the GM is going to be thinking, what is this creature or person in the conflict going to do? And they're going to set those actions before you set yours. Right? And they're not going to tell you. So you could do really well or you could do really bad. Okay, But if you lose, it's not like you're going to die. It's just the story may go off into a different, um, into a different, um, you know, what's the word? A different direction. So if you lose a conflict, basically if your disposition is reduced to zero, while your opponent has points left, you have lost. And basically, you don't accomplish the goal that you are um, that you are stating or that you've stated. <clears throat> the thing about it is, it's not always a complete loss. There is something at the end of these called compromises. Okay, so if you win, but you've lost less than half of your disposition, it's a minor compromise. Um, basically, the loser can ask you for a small part of his goal or something related to it. So if I'm the snake, maybe, yeah, I'm getting, you know, hurt and scared away, but maybe I'm like, look, I'll go away if you just give me one thing of honey, or I don't know why a snake would want honey, but you know what I'm saying. So that's a minor compromise. If you've lost half of, less than half of your disposition, okay, maybe the loser can ask for a little, basically, basically throw him a small bow, you know, to help him out. Then you have, if you've lost about half, of your disposition. That's just a regular compromise. The loser doesn't get his goal, but maybe he got halfway there. So maybe you scare off the crow, but the, the crow messed up all, all of your honey or most of your honey or some of your honey. Okay. Then you have a major com compromise that basically you won and I'm at zero, but you have only a few hit points left. Basically it was a narrow victory. Um, then the winner has to grant the loser a major compromise. Um, basically that you were just about to your goal, but in the end, you barely missed it, right? So it isn't just about winning and losing. At the end of these conflicts, there are always compromises, okay? So keep that in, in mind, guys. Um, that is pretty much it. You know, you, you set up what type of conflict it is. You figure out the people who are involved in it, right? You pick somebody who's going to be the conflict captain. You get your disposition number, your group, the, the equivalent of your group HP, okay? They get that number. I said it's on page 
111, or excuse me, 105, I, I think, is how, how you get it. Then you play rock, paper, scissors for, for a little while, and you narrate it. You know, you will see what I turn, and then I'll see what you turn. And we narrate what happens based off of those roles, just like anything else. It's fairly simple. We do that three times, three rounds, okay? Three, three people can, can act. One person is not going to act at the same time. So maybe the conflict captain goes first, then someone else, and then some, someone else. And it's going to be based off of their role. So it's not just the conflict captain rolling. It's up to three people rolling, you know, one per, per time, okay? And at the very end, so if you reduce your enemy down to zero disposition, you win. But how much damage did you take to? How much of your goal are you going to be able to get? How much are you going to have to compromise? Because this game is not about when you're losing. The story goes in so many different directions based off of that. But just because you brought his, their disposition down to zero doesn't mean that you got everything that you wanted. There's a lot of gray area in, in this conflict system. It's really cool. I've never... I know the rock, paper, scissors analogy is probably not the best one, guys. But it's the. I think it's really cool... It's like Magic the Gathering or any other card game where you're you're flipping cards over. And I've seen live plays on like on like Roll Twenty where they actually have cards that you flip over, you know, on the screen. I don't have that type of technology, but it was still really cool to see. So, um, and like I said, guys, we've talked about that. There's things that can help you in, in combat. There's gear that that can help you. There's wises that that can help you. All that stuff goes in to helping your roles for your disposition. The higher your disposition, the better, okay? So hopefully that was a, oh, 15 or 16 minute kind of synopsis on conflict. I hope that helps guys. I might do one more video just showing some of the mechanics and I'm gonna be doing a mouse guard game, um, I believe with Connor. No, not Connor, yes. Connor, yes, I, I don't know. There's a couple people that I'm going to be doing a mouse card game with here uh, in the next few weeks. And I'm going to put that in as kind of the, the bottom of this. And if you haven't checked it out, go to Chad Nick's channel. Um, he is doing a mouse guard kind of Game of Thrones-esque um, setting. Um, he just did the first game. You should check it out. It's really cool. And you'll see how it, how it works really well by somebody who knows the system a lot more than me. So overall, guys, with mouse guard, it's been very enjoyable to learn the system. It's very different. You're literally rolling a fistful of dice. Um, shout out to Matt Click there from uh, Fistful of Dice on, on YouTube channel. Um, but once you get into the rhythm of it, it's really neat. It's very RP heavy. It's not a hack and slash game. It's all about who your character is, where they came from. And just in the character creation story, you come up with so much of who your character is. And it's, it's really cool. So I doubt I'm going to be running a campaign on it, but... Uh, this is going to be the, as I said, the final how-to on this for conflict. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. If there's any other systems that you want to see, I have a few over here. I have Fate Core, and I have Savage Worlds, and I have Fantasy Age. Um, I'm going to be doing one of those next. So if there's anything that you guys want to see, I keep my budget around two or three RPGs a month. So um, if you have some ideas, by all means, shoot it my, my way. I, I hope it helps, guys. I hope this has given you a little bit of an insight into how Mouse Guard works. And um, yeah, you know, give me some feedback, give me, give me a, a thumbs up, so subscribe to the channel. There's a lot more of these how-tos to come. So again, guys, have a great day and thanks for watching.